Hey, how you doing? This is John, and welcome to John's Long Box. I had a request to do some uh, Dungeons & Dragons comics from the 80s, so I looked, and I, I didn't even remember I had this. I had to uh, refresh my memory with this, but this is DC Comics Advanced Dungeons & Dragons number 1, and this was made in cooperation with TSR Games. So this comic is set in their Forgotten Realms uh, setting, universe, whatever you want to call it, and uh, more specifically in, in the city of Waterdeep. And Waterdeep... Is a big deal in in D and D lore. The, 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 there's modules set that you know adventures pre pre made adventures that you could buy set in Water Deep. It has like a fantastic lore. There's novels written about it and everything. In fact, there's a, one of my favorite board games is Lords of Water Deep, set in the city of of Water Deep. You know, it, it's just that's to me is a fun game. Whenever I have get new people come over for a game night, I'll, I'll break out Lords of Water Deep because it's a, it's a, it's a good introductory game to you know it's but it but it's fun. It's not whatever. It's not. I don't think it's a fun game. So, this is Advanced Dungeons Dragons. What year is this? This is 1988. Now, this is the new format. DC Comics was experimenting with new formats at the time. Uh, a couple of years prior to this, you know, all comic books were only available. Well, all comic books were on newsprint, and you could get them at like newsstands and, and news racks and 7-Eleven, stuff like that. But around this time, comic book stores were becoming the, the main way to buy comic books. And comic books were they they were coming up with a uh, direct uh, markets that's that's comic book stores meaning that they went right to the uh, comic book stores and the comic book stores bought them and then sold them to to uh, customers what yeah what does that mean well at the newsstand the, the the publishers were selling the comics and they were like had a partnership with the newsstands and whatever didn't sell the newsstands returned for credit so it was kind of like less risky for newsstands so it's more risky for a uh, for uh, direct market places like comic book stores, but but then the, the comic book stores could take the unsold merchandise and, and up the price later on. That's called the back market, uh, you know, back market sales. So let's say, I don't know, for whatever reason, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, you, you ordered 20 of them. You bought 20 of them. You kept them. And then when the, you know, the, 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 the new the second number two comes out, you, you could do whatever you want. You could raise the price on this because now it's in demand. You could give it away. It's yours. Do whatever you want with it. When, when If you were at a 7-Eleven, say, and number two came out, what you did was you sent back number one. They gave you credit. So I think all you really had to do was, was lay out the initial investment for comic books and magazines and newspapers. And then the money was gravy, provided nothing was stolen. And then there you go. So Low risk for newsstands, high risk for comic book stores, but also a chance for greater profitability. Duh. So, all right. So now that they're going to the direct market, DC was experimenting with better quality paper, better publishing things, and uh, you know, for they were throwing, they were trying a lot of different things, seeing what stick. Eventually, all comic books kind of became this, this, this high quality paper and everything like that. So this was actually more expensive. I think the regular comics were, were seventy five cents at the time, and this was a dollar twenty five because this, this, you know, if you were to touch this and, and pick this up right now, it would feel like a regular comic book today. But because uh, it's 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 better quality paper and better quality printing and stuff like that stuff we're used to today. But prior to this was this. All right, I'm I'm rambling about stuff that doesn't matter. All right, so let's get back to Dungeons and Dragons. So TSR, uh, seems like Dungeons and Dragons has made a, a a renaissance today. It's really popular again. But it's it's like a sine wave. Dungeons and Dragons gets popular and then it it gets forgotten about. It gets popular and it has happened like three or four times that that I know about. Um, I got into Dungeons Dragons. Geez, I, I, I want to say like maybe 1980, 1979, around there, when I went to a friend's house and they were playing, and uh, I, I, I was just like, "What are you guys doing?" And one guy, the DM, he had a pencil and they would, he, he had his map, and then I remember the other guys were sitting around on the floor and they would, they had their own graph paper and they were mapping the map out, and you know, you know. I, I didn't know what they were doing. So I just sat there and I asked a lot of questions. And I was a lot younger than these guys. You know, I went to go see my friend and his friend's older brother were doing this. And I, I think they saw me as a pest and they kind of like 23 scooted me out the door. But I don't know, I, I was always enthralled by it. And I remember the, the, the friends I was with, they were like, you like that stuff? That's like, that's like nerd stuff. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. They're a bunch of jerks. Because, you know, peer pressure is a, is a hell of a thing. But anyway, I was fascinated with that. Then I asked to join and that was it. I was hooked. I met a friend who, who was like eager to teach and boom, I was playing Dungeons Dragons ever since. Now, 
it, it, it hit a peak popularity around this time. And then it kind of disappeared. And I guess during COVID, during the lockdown, Dungeons and Dragons, it was a perfect thing to do because, you know, every, you can't go outside, and, you know, whatever. So a lot of people were playing through Zoom and whatever. So not, Dungeons and Dragons is cool again. You know, all, all the cool kids are doing it. So, but at this point, Dungeons and Dragons had, had a peak and they made comics. And this is one of them. So this is story by Michael Fleischer, art by Jan Dersoma. And I love Jan Dersoma. I, I'm sure I'm saying their names wrong. So let, oh, let's let's do the cast of characters. Okay, this is Onyx the Invincible, a dwarven warrior. Okay, he's like ready to fight at, at, at a, up a drop of a hat. This is Timoth Eyesbright, the good-natured centaur ranger, I think. And this is Vajra Valjimar, that jabroni. Let's try that again. Vajra Valmijar. And she's like a, a, a gladiator warrior, uh, a former champion gladiator. And this is, uh, why can't I think of his name? Uh, Priam Agravar, a, a, a paladin. And this is the elven wizard who, oh my god, Kriani Agravard. So, uh, and that's, she's the half elven mage. And you gotta have a mage to, to round out the team, and you gotta have a non human to round out the team. But now that I think about this, three non humans and two humans. All right, so there you go. Dungeons Dragons it was always diverse. I don't care what anybody says. That's just a, to me, that's just saying, how do you. No, you never were into comic books and Dungeons and Dragons when you complained about lack of diversity to these days. That just means you weren't buying comic books and you weren't actually doing the stuff you're pretending to love today. You, whatever. All right, so I this story is, is no big deal. This is the introductory story. Let's get the team together. And th those are, you know, with, with notable exceptions, those are always like the weakest the weakest stories. So uh, oh, let's look at the indicia. We already know the year, but that's, you know, 1988. See, this is owned by TSR. So this is... This is licensed out to DC Comics. So DC Comics can't just today make a Forgotten Realms uh, comic. They can't use these characters. These are all owned by, by TSR. And I think that these guys are like, they're in modules now. These are like characters that you, you, you could purchase and get all their stats and stuff like that. Let's, let's look at the uh, DC this week. Black Market, that was interesting. Wasteland was a very bizarre, very interesting comic. The Quest, and I love that series, Comics Weekly. I thought the weekly format kind of ruined the quality of action. Red Stone Dragons, number one. Dr. Fate, this was an interesting series. The Wanderers, this was garbage. I got them all, but they were garbage. Cops, I never got that. Suicide Squad was, was, was a fun series. I, I, I like Suicide Squad. So here we have a, a talking to the High Wizard, you know, Gizzy Quest, and look, I, I just... I thought John DeSoma was, was such a good, like, fantasy. Oh, I got to pull back. There's a two-page two spread. And we got this this Freakazoid just, just pop it in and, and attack it. And this guy is a paladin who, he later leaves the comics. I, I can't remember why. It's been so long since since I read all of this. You know, I, I bought this on the stands, and I think I only have, like, the first couple of issues. And now, thanks to the person who requested this, now you're going to cost me a couple of couple of. $50, $60, maybe 100 bucks, because now i got to get the, the issues that I'm missing. So thank you very much. So, uh, that's, I'm only kidding. I, I love this stuff. So here, they're, they're, they're fighting. And I I got to say, I'm not too impressed with the uh, with the lack of details in the backgrounds. Just the, the, the colors are just whatever, just standard. You know, this is old school coloring, and he gets hit with the lance. He's all pissed off, and father disappears Ooh, father and the mystic mcguffin is now taken you know you'll never no you'll never keep the mystic mcguffin and in order to get the mystic mcguffin we got to go here and here we have mage fight mage fight and look at old oh, doctor i wonder what spells usually when they do doc, uh, doctor strange usually when they do dungeons dragons stuff they they kind of like put a footnote and tell you what spell they're using because they try to keep it because remember, this is licensed. So all the scripts and all the art has to be approved by TSR. And TSR, I'm sure, was uh, making sure that everything fit within their lore. You know, you're not going to have spaceships land in, in water deep and stuff like that. So I, I don't know. Does anybody know? Were, were centaurs playable classes back then? I, I remember back when I started playing, like, it was humans, elves, half-elves, half-orcs, dwarves, and, and gnomes and halflings. Like, were the only things that you could play. And then uh, I, I remember, like, 
rebelling and letting I, one guy wanted to play a minotaur so i, I, I was like all right you're a minotaur <laughs> so here's they hang out in this inn this is a uh, saloon smile is the name of the inn and what good dungeons dragon story they always start in an inn and and uh the uh the wizard what's her name uh why can't her creani she's like basically like living in, in the inn the way some people like live in hotels and stuff like that and here she's summoning flowers. Was that a fourth level spell? Summoning flowers. And she gets attacked by these. I remember these were Sturges. But if I remember correctly, the Sturges in my monster manual were like the size of bats. So, but I, I, I always recognize that face. And and I remember there was like a a D and D ed drawn by Bill Willingham that, that had these creatures in it, and they're being attacked. So, capture capture the Rudy. Uh, and again, look, notice the background detail. It's it's kind of kind of lacking if you ask me kind of like it and here we have onyx and and, and bright eyes they're they're gonna go and uh right the wrongs they see uh this these i think they're called sturges they're flying away uh, kind of like they are right in the eyeball watch out watch out <laughs> i love the it gets blood all over them and fight breaks out <laughs> this is this is better the backgrounds that's better and here we have uh He's pissed off. He rescues the fair maiden, who is also a, 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 an aspiring wizard. I don't think she's there yet. I think, you know, first level wizard is the way to describe her. And a lot, lot of darkness. Oh, yeah, I got to say, assembling the team stories are never never the best. But I figured, start with issue number one. So she's talking about this. Oh, I got to find my, my... The paladin, she's a half-elven. So I think her, the paladin, they have the same last name. I think that's her brother, you know. Right? They have the same father, different mothers. And uh, they stole my medallion. We got to go. We got to get this. And they're like, what, what's in it for us? You know, blah, blah, blah. What's in it for And here's the bad guys scheming. Look at the bad guys. They're always in cool uniforms. And the, what is this, Dragonkin guy? And summons a, like a full-on dragon gargoyle thing to attack. And now they're going through uh, the town of Waterdeep. It's rainy. And if I remember correctly, this is one of the guys who becomes a major character. But right now, he's down on his luck and he's begging. And he joins the team down on... You know, oh, wow. I will show you... Th this is the Ed for the Sandman comic. The, the famous Neil Gaiman Sandman. That's going to be on Netflix pretty soon. I, 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 I know they're changing it because in today's climate, they got to change things. But uh, I'm still looking forward to this. I, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of curious to see what they do with it. Uh, I saw a quick teaser teller, and it looked like the first issue just put on the page. So this guy's being all Aragon, hanging out at the inn with the hood on, being all mysterious. I mean, there's tropes, and they work for a reason. And now he's recognizing them. Look at this, and ta-da! It's Vajra, V A J R A Vajra, which I'm sure they knew, but that is an Indian word meaning lightning bolt. So I guess with the complexion, she's like supposed to be like of Indian descent. So Vajra Val Yajmar, I, you know, these fantasy names kill me. They look good written down, but I, I can't pronounce them. <laughs> so she's the, reveals herself. And now look, we got the team together. The center, would you let a centaur into your inn? <laughs> I, I, I guess you can't be speciesist. And now they stole my MacGuffin. We got to get my MacGuffin. We got to get the, you know, together. And what is this? Oh, Gamma Rotos. Yeah, I know nothing about this. I, I, I know just from the look of this, this is something I would not have been interested at the time. So I, I know nothing about Gamma Rotos. And here we go. The talker, what's in it for me? I, you know, pulls out a little nice feisty little dwarf wants to fight. And here they are, they're going to go assault the castle. And I like this. She has like a strike spell that makes rocks launch. That is a pretty cool spell. You cast that spell and what, rocks just get hit with momentum and boom, take off. Like kind of bad. It's cool. And they're attacking everybody. Of course, the centaur is going to throw them in the barrel. Because in Dungeons and Dragons, it was always hack and slash. Just kill the people, take the treasure, take... But this is a comic book, so they, they can't just kill people, I guess. So, you know... It it doesn't it doesn't look good, you know. What you do in the privacy of your own role playing table is, is between you and your DM. But uh, DC's got an image, and I'm sure TSR's got an image. So we're not gonna just be hacking up people. And she is kind of like down and out wizard for a while. And here it goes. We, this is her brother. Oh, 
oh yeah we found my brother and now we can uh, get together and looks like she's going to an outhouse but what it is it's the crescent moon symbol S S salune is is the goddess of the moon and she the 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 inn is like a an inn slash temple of, of the moon goddess and that's where their, their their team is located they all got together the teams together we went on a little raid we got some information we, we rescued the uh the guy that needed rescuing, the team is put together, and now let's go out and, and, and do the adventure. So this I like. This gives you like a little bit of a background character about all the uh, about information about the Guardians of Waterdeep, who they are, the, the magic item, the Staff of Withering. The guy that was begging, he, I, I made a mistake. That, that's not her brother. The, the paladin is a brother. This, this is a wizard, uh, Black Staff something. And uh, he got his hands hit by a staff of withering and his hands got shrunken and he couldn't do spells. So, you know, all of his life he studied magic, he used his hands, and now his hands got withered, so he, he, he could only beg. He couldn't do anything else. So there you go. So now they're rescuing him. They're going to they're gonna restore his hands. So this is all the write-ups of uh, the staff of withering. And here, the character, uh, the Supreme Agravar. This is the paladin. This is what I got mixed up with the red guy. So this is their stats. Remember, uh, the stats are uh, based from 3 to 18. So he's got a 17 strength with the 3 when he had the curse on him. So look at that. He's like super strength. So if 3 to 18, you figured 9 is about average. I used to tell people 9 and 10 was, was a flat, strained human. So, you know, you wanted to be better than 9 to be to be considered, uh, you know, good. So 14, 14 wisdom, this guy's pretty smart. Dexterity is about average. Constitution, this guy's like the healthiest guy in the world. Uh, charisma 17 you know you, 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 you 17 charisma this guy could run for president you know what i mean like you figure you figure like obama and i'm trying to think of like charismatic john f kennedy and stuff like that these guys like had 17 18 charismas at armor class you know and here's their languages their, their special skills right up i'm gonna turn the page and yeah, you know, so every every issue they they do a write-up for one of the characters and here's a, of course you gotta have an ad for a, the role-playing network Role Playing Gaming Association, I think it stands for. Yep, yeah, right there. Role Playing Gaming Association. That is so cool. And here is TSR gets to uh, advertise stuff in the back of their own comic book. That's pretty cool. And then we have an ad for Invasion, which was absolute garbage. This was one of those uh, company wide, uh, uh, company wide uh, events that that infiltrated all the. It was just bad. It was just bad. And an ad for Mr. Miracle. This was an underrated series. I kind of got forget, forgotten about. I, I like this. J.M. Dematit. This guy got my trust. I, I really like him as a writer. And Ian Gibson. I first heard of him for the British comic. Uh, with 2000 AD, he did a strip called uh, Halo Jones that I really, really enjoyed. And Classic Rock CD. There you go. So you, there you go. That's Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Um, my memory on this is is because I, I picked this up sparsely. I, I think I... Back then, I picked up all number ones from DC Comics, except for Gamma Marauders. But I picked up all number ones, and uh, I told you a few times that I wasn't into fantasy and Dungeons Dragons type comics, even though I was playing Dungeons Dragons. My comic books, I wanted superheroes, you know, and and not even science fiction. I lately, I later got into science fiction, but I only lately got into like fantasy comics. I started reading like Conan and 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 more like. Dungeons Dragons y type comics and even horror comics within the past couple of years. So you know, I'm I'm gonna pick up the 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 uh, back issues of this and I'm, I'll read the series. You know what? And I will revisit this in a, in a couple of issues. Maybe around issue ten, I'll I'll I'll, I'll showcase issue ten. We'll, we'll I'll I'll bring you up to speed if you're interested. Let me know if you're interested in that. You know, or, you know, I'll, I'll I'll tell by the views. If the only two people watch it, then then forget about it. You know, because last time I did the Dungeons Dragons, I did that that tome of whatever. And it was supposed to be like a four-issue series. I stopped after two because no, nobody was watching it. So there you go. I don't know. All right, now I'm rambling. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Thank you for requesting. You know, I'm, I'm still a small channel. So if, if you request, and I record like one, two videos a day to, to keep to keep ahead of everything. So if you request something, you you know, and, and I have the comic, I would I would kind of be a jerk not to, not to do it. And, and you'll see it pretty quick. All right, thanks a lot. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.